In this video, you're going to learn how to work with the sum and difference formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. We're going to go through six examples together to find exact values of trig functions of angles that we don't know from our unit circle, but we can use the angles that we do know on our unit circle. So let's dive into this video. The first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and find the sine of 75 degrees. So when we go to our unit circle, we say 75 degrees, that's not on the unit circle. How do I find the sine of 75 degrees? Well, that's where these formulas come into play. They're called sum and difference formulas. And what you can do is you can add or subtract two angles that you're familiar with here on the unit circle to find the sine of an angle that you're not familiar with. So what you wanna ask yourself, what two angles add or subtract to 75 degrees? Well, we could do 45 plus 30 degrees. And then what these formulas are, they're like identities. The left side and the right side are identical. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand to the right side of the equation here. So for example, sine of 75, that's like we said, 45 plus 30 or it could do the reverse, 30 plus 45. Now notice here that our A value is 45 and our B value is 30. So when we expand to the right side of our equation here, it's gonna be sine of A, which is 45, times the cosine of B, which is 30, plus the cosine of A, which is 45, times the sine of B, which is equal to 30. Okay, so now that we've expanded, let's go to our unit circle and say, what's the sine of 45 degrees? Well, 45 degrees, remember on the unit circle, the sine is the y coordinate, the cosine is the x. So the sine of 45, that's gonna be root two over two. The cosine of 30 degrees, now cosine is our x coordinate, so that's gonna be square root three over two. The cosine of 45, that's our x coordinate here, square root two over two. And then the sine of 30, that's gonna be our y coordinate at 30 degrees, that's one half. Okay, so now all we have to do is a little bit of arithmetic here. Multiply the numerators together, square root of two times square root of three is square root of six. Two times two is four. Here, multiply the numerators together, square root of two times one is square root of two, and two times two is four. Now notice we have a common denominator of four, so we can combine this into one fraction, square root of six plus square root of two over four. And what this represents, it's like an exact value for the sine of 75 degrees. Now you could go to your calculator and type in sine of 75 degrees, and you're gonna get a decimal, but this is gonna be an exact value. Now one quick pointer here, notice how I've condensed these formulas, like I put the sine sum formula where you're adding two angles and the sine difference formula where you're subtracting two angles together. So if you notice here, we're adding, so here you're adding. If you're subtracting, you're subtracting. Sometimes students get confused when it comes to cosine. When you're adding, you're actually gonna subtract. See how that addition sign's on top, subtraction sign is on top. But when you're subtracting with cosine, then over here on the right side, you're gonna add, so it's the opposite. So we're gonna work through some more examples. Let's look at example number two. Okay, for example number two now, we've got the cosine of 13 pi over 12. Now again, we don't know where 13 pi over 12 is on our unit circle, so we're gonna to wanna to try to find two angles that add or subtract to give us 13 pi over 12. Now a lot of us are not so familiar in terms of thinking in terms of radians, so what you might wanna do is look at this 13 pi over 12, maybe go over here to the side, and let's convert it into degrees. So remember, when you convert from radians and degrees, you're gonna multiply by 180 degrees for every pi radians. This way the pi radians in the numerator cancels with the pi radians in the denominator. You can also cross reduce here, 12 goes in here once, 12 goes in 180 15 times, and then 13 times 15 is 195 degrees. Okay, so now what two angles add or subtract to 195 degrees? Well, we could do 150, which we know on our unit circle, and 45, those add to 195. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. Let's say the cosine of 150 plus 45, and then notice that uh, A is 150 and B is 45. We're gonna go to our cosine sum formula. This is the top one and we're gonna do the cosine of A plus B. So this is gonna be the cosine of 150 
times the cosine of b, which is 45, minus, remember it's the opposite, if you add here, you're going to subtract with cosine, the sine of 150 times the sine of 45. Okay, so now back to our unit circle, cosine of 150, 150 is right here, cosine is the x-coordinate, that's going to be a negative square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 45, that's our x-coordinate at 45, that's going to be square root 2 over 2. And the sine of 150, that's going to be our y-coordinate at 150, that's a half. And the sine of 45, that's our y-coordinate at 45, that's square root 2 over 2. Okay, now all we have to do is a little bit of arithmetic. So multiplying the numerators together, we get negative square root of 6 over the denominators multiplied together, which is 4. And then here, multiply the numerators together, square root of 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. Now again, notice we have a common denominator of 4. So let's go ahead and combine this into one fraction with that common denominator. So here we can see we've got negative square root of 6 minus square root of 2 all over 4. And when you're doing these problems, a lot of times you'll notice you get a lot of square root of 6s and square root of 2s, but sometimes you're adding, sometimes you're subtracting, sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative. But again, keep in mind this is an exact value for the cosine of 13 pi over 12, which is an angle that we don't know on our unit circle, but we can get from adding or subtracting two angles that we do know. So let's take a look at another example. For example number three, we've got the tangent of 285 degrees, which again, that's not an angle that we're familiar with on the unit circle, but are there two angles that add to 285 or subtract to 285? That's the question, right? So you can do two angles that add or subtract. In this case, let's go ahead and do two angles that subtract since we've been doing a couple where they add. So in this case, you could do uh, 315 degrees minus uh, 30 degrees. Okay, that's the same as 285. So now we're going to go to our tangent difference formula. Notice this is the one here on the bottom, and we're going to expand that to the right side of our identity. So A is going to be 315 and B is going to be 30. So let's start off with the tangent of 315 degrees minus the tangent of 30 divided by 1 plus the tangent of 315 times the tangent of 30. Okay, tangent of 315. Now on the unit circle, the tangent's the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So at 315, a negative root 2 over 2 divided by a positive root 2 over 2, that's going to give us a negative 1. So let's replace that with negative 1. The tangent of 30 is again the y over the x, so 1 half divided by square root 3 over 2, that's going to come out to square root 3 over 3 when you simplify. Okay, and then let's go to the denominator. The tangent of 315, we already established that was negative 1, and the tangent of 30, we already established was square root 3 over 3. Now all we have to do is a little bit of arithmetic. So Let's simplify a little bit here. So this is going to give us, uh, let's see, uh, negative 1 minus square root of 3 over 3 divided by 1 uh, minus square root of 3 over 3. And what we can do is we can multiply the numerator and denominator by 3 to clear the denominator. So what we're going to do is I'm going to distribute this 3, and I'm going to distribute this 3, and so that's going to give us a negative 1 times 3 is a negative 3. Here, I'll put it over here. Uh, and then here are 3 and the 3 that cancels. So that just gives us a negative square root of 3. And in the denominator, we have 3. And then here, these 3's cancel, so we get minus square root of 3. Okay, now you could leave it like that, and a lot of times teachers will be okay with that because we cleared the complex fraction. We don't have like a fraction inside of a larger fraction. But technically speaking, you don't want this radical here in the denominator. So we want to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the conjugate. So here we've got 3 minus root 3. Let's multiply by 3 plus square root of 3 to the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. We've got negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9. Uh, negative 3 times square root of 3 is negative 3 square root of 3. A negative square root of 3 times 3 is another negative 3 square root of 3. And negative square root of 3 times positive square root of 3 is negative square root of 9. 
which is just going to give us negative 3. And in the denominator, what happens, the inside and the outside cancel because we have a negative 3 root 3 and a positive 3 root 3. So the first terms, 3 times 3 is 9, and the last terms is going to give us uh, negative 3. So now let's see, negative 9 minus 3 is negative 12. Negative 3 root 3 minus 3 root 3 is negative 6 square root of 3. And 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. Okay, now what we can do is we can actually split this up into two fractions and divide both these terms in the numerator by 6. So if we do that, that's going to give us negative 12 over 6, which is negative 2. And negative 6 root 3 divided by 6 is just going to give us negative square root of 3. And now what we have is an exact value for the tangent of 285 degrees. Okay, we're going to go through three more examples, and I'd like for you to try to pause the video and do these next three examples on your own for some practice, and we'll go through them together. But I also wanted to let you know if you like the way that I explain things and you want to go deeper with me into like an Algebra 2 slash College Algebra uh, class, I've got a video course for sale that goes through about 85 lessons. It takes you step by step through a typical Algebra 2 slash College Algebra course. So check that out in the description below. And if you just want to support the videos that I'm putting up here on my Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel, consider joining and becoming a channel member. So for a few dollars a month, you can help support the channel. I see everybody's name or handle or YouTube channel or YouTube name uh, that comes through. And I know that uh, you're part of the channel and I really appreciate that. So let's dive into these last three examples. Uh, how would you calculate the sine of 15? We want an exact value for the sine of 15. So go ahead and see if you can do that one. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the identity here, and I'm going to think, hmm, two angles that add or subtract to 15. Well, I could do uh, sine of 45 minus 30. 45 minus 30 gives us 15, so that's identical. And then in our formula, our 45 degrees is our A, and our 30 is our B, and then we're using the bottom one here with sine. Now, sometimes uh, the way I learned it originally was sine is the same, meaning if you add, it's the same, you add. If you subtract, you subtract, it's the same. Whereas cosine, it's the opposite. So if you add, you subtract, subtract, you add. That's just a little hack to help you remember. So let's go ahead and expand this, the sine of 45 times the cosine of 30 minus the cosine of 45 times the sine of 30. Okay, so what's the sine of 45? That's our y coordinate on our unit circle, uh, which is going to be square root 2 over 2. And you can see there's a lot of moving parts in these problems. These are good problems for, for teachers to give because you have to know the unit circle, you have to know your identities, you have to know how to work with radicals. Now the cosine of 30, that's the x-coordinate at 30, because cosine is the x, so that's square root 3 over 2. The cosine of 45, that's our x-coordinate at 45, that's root 2 over 2. And the sine of 30, that's our y-coordinate at 30, which is 1 half. So back to our arithmetic now, we've got multiply the numerators together, that's square root of 6. Denominators together, that's 4. Multiply the numerators together, that's square root of 2. And the denominators together, that's 4 common denominator, so we can combine this into one fraction with that common denominator, square root of 6 minus square root of 2 all over 4, and again, that's an exact value for the sine of 15 degrees. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, how would you do example number 5? We've got cosine of 7 pi over 12. Go ahead and pause the video. Now, if I was going to do this problem myself, I would convert the 7 pi over 12 into degrees, since I'm not so familiar with radians, uh, in terms of figuring out what two angles add to 7 pi over 12. So over here on the side, let's just go ahead and do a little conversion. We know there's 180 degrees for every pi radians. This way the pi's in the numerator and denominator cancel. 12 goes into 180 15 times, and 7 times 15 is 105 degrees over 1, which is 105. So now a little bit simpler, what two angles uh, add to 105 or subtract to 105? Well, we could do 60 plus 45, okay, or, here let's write that down, so 60 plus 45. Sometimes teachers will be real particular and they'll say, well, if I give it to you in radians, I want you to work in radians. So what I would do is instead of using 60 and 45, I would just say, well, I know 60 is pi over 3, and I know 45 is pi over 4, and we'll just work with the radian uh, 
you know, measurements here. So let's go ahead and expand this. Now notice this is a cosine sum formula. Remember how we said cosine is the opposite, so we're going to subtract on the right. So this is going to be cosine of A times cosine of B opposite, so subtraction, the sine of A times the sine of B. Okay, so now we just have to figure out what's the cosine of pi over 3. Cosines are x coordinate at pi over 3, that's going to be 1 half. What's the cosine of pi over 4? That's going to be our x coordinate at pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2. What's the sine of pi over 3? That's the y coordinate, square root 3 over 2. And what's the sine of pi over 4? That's the y coordinate, square root 2 over 2. Okay, so a little bit of arithmetic. So we've got numerators multiplied together, that's square root of 2. Denominators multiplied together, that's 4. Numerators multiplied together, that's square root of 6. Denominators multiplied together, that's 4. Common denominator of 4. So let's go ahead and write this as one fraction with that common denominator. And you got it. Again, this is an exact value for the cosine of uh, 7 pi over 12. Let's go through one last example. Okay, for our last and final example, we're going to try to figure out the tangent of 165 degrees. See if you can pause the video and do this one on your own. And let me know in the comments if you made it all the way to this final example. Uh, great job. Uh, so how would you do this one? Tangent of 165. Well, I tend to think about two angles that add to 165, but you can do adding or subtracting. In this case, what's jumping out at me is that uh, 120 plus 45 is equal to 165. So I'm going to work with 120 plus 45. Now we're working with the tangent sum formula, so we're going to want to use these signs that are up top here. So see, up top. So now this is going to come out to the tangent of 120 plus the tangent of 45 um, divided by 1 minus the tangent of 120 times the tangent of 45. Okay, so going to our unit circle now, tangent of 120, remember tangent's the y divided by the x, so root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half is going to simplify to negative square root of 3. The tangent of 45, that's going to be y divided by x, so root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, which is 1. And in the denominator, the tangent of 120 we said was negative root 3, and the tangent of 45 we said was 1. So if we simplify this, let's go ahead and do it over here, this comes out to negative square root of 3 plus 1 over 1, uh, this is negative root 3, so 1 minus negative root 3 is like 1 plus square root of 3. And then we want to rationalize the denominator because we don't want this radical in the denominator. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate, which is 1 minus square root of 3. Of course, whatever we do to the denominator, we want to do to the numerator, okay, to keep it balanced. So let's go ahead and multiply these out. So negative root 3 times 1 is negative square root of 3. Negative square root of 3 times negative square root of 3 is positive 3. 1 times 1 is 1 and 1 times negative root 3 is negative square root of 3. In the denominator, the inside and outside cancel, because that's root 3 and negative root 3, which is 0. So we're left with 1 times 1, which is 1, and negative root 3 times positive root 3 is negative 3. Remember, when you multiply a square root times itself, you just get the number underneath. But we had a positive times a negative, so it's a negative. And 1 minus 3, we know, is negative 2. Uh, 1 plus 3 is 4, and negative root 3 plus negative root 3 is negative 2 squared of 3. And then what we'll do is we'll split this into two fractions, 4 divided by negative 2 and negative 2 root 3 divided by negative 2. So that comes out to negative 2 and positive square root of 3. And that's an exact answer for the tangent of 165 degrees. So great job if you're able to get that one. And if you want more practice or want to see more examples, follow me to a previous video I did on the same topic, talking about sum and difference formulas. And we'll get some more practice in that video. I'll see you over there.